Hello and welcome to NOV Live. I'm Michael Gaines, host of the podcast NOV Today, and glad you are joining us for another episode of our ongoing conversation with technical experts in the field of oil and gas and other energy sources as we look to bring you insights into technologies and uh, bring those conversations to you. So thanks for joining us. We are excited to have a conversation today about uh, some technology that's actually uh, been around for a while, but uh, some new advancements in the development uh, is certainly to hopefully bring some good conversation and uh, and certainly get your questions in as well. So speaking of conversations and getting your voice in, want to bring in another voice. That'll be Shelby Dumaine to talk about how you can be a part of today's conversation and uh, get your questions in. Hey, Shelby. Hey, Michael. I'm really excited for today's conversation. And if you watching at home would like to get involved, we have a couple different ways you can do so. Uh, the first is simply by commenting down below in the comment section uh, on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. If you have any questions at any time, uh, you can comment those below. We're, you know, I'm in the comment section throughout the show, and we're going to get to as many of those questions before the end of the show as possible. Uh, the few other ways you can get involved is first, after the show, if you'd like to send us a note, send us a question, maybe an idea of something you'd like to hear us talk about, you can do that by emailing us at socialmedia at nov.com. That's socialmedia at nov.com. And the other ways you can actually give us a call. So you can reach us at 346 223 4799. You can call us, you leave a voicemail, uh, you can stay anonymous if you'd like, or you can let us know your, your name and title, and we'd love to feature you on the show if, if that's what you'd like. But I really love that option, so looking forward to hearing uh, your emails, comments, your calls. Anyway, we love hearing from our audience. Uh, but yeah, so like Michael said, and, and like I mentioned, so we're going to have some conversations on the show today, and we're also going to uh, be hearing from you, from your questions. But before we do that, I wanted to ask you a question for our Rig Geeks in the audience. So now it's time for Rig Geek Post of the Week. Rig Geeks Post of the Week. All right, so this week we have our question. We're asking uh, the first patented mud pole system was developed in which country? Uh, now, instead of just asking of out of every country in the world, we do have some options for you. So those options are A, United States, B, France, C, Canada, D, Holland, or E, Scotland. So again, that question is, the first patented mud pole system was developed in which country? And we have the choices on screen now. So let us know in the comments uh, what, what you think it is, which country you think it was developed in first. And at the end of the show, we will reveal the answer. All right. So, uh... Or, or, or I guess you could have F, my country. I, I don't know if you, I, I'm sure there's, that's, I was always one to put, you know, all of the above or, or my answer, but maybe that's, I know that's not how it goes today. So I, I don't want to skew the, <laughs> skew the, the answers, but that, that's great. Cool. Well, thanks, Shelby. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, as, as Shelby mentioned, uh, and as kind of our, our Rig Geek post of the week, alluded to, we're actually talking about, uh, again, a technology that's been around and one of the tools in the uh, the oil field that, uh, it, like many things, is a link in the the, the large chain of, of operations and and really helps uh, uh, provide a component to, to uh, drill a successful well. So uh, to talk to us about MWD technology and what that looks like from NOV, we're going to go ahead and bring in our guest today. It's going to be Carrie Eddy, and Carrie is uh, going to be he's actually the sales manager for North America. Uh, and uh, so, Carrie, glad that you are joining us today. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me and um, Shelby and Michael. It's uh, yeah, exciting to be here. Yeah, glad glad you're here. So, uh, you know, we were talking a little bit in pre-show, and I think I've mentioned in some other uh, uh, other conversations. Um, you know, I, I kind of got my start. Uh, well, m right after I started in drill bits, I moved over to so downhole survey tools and. And I know there's some some differences if you want to get like really technical, but but close cousin to uh, some of the MWD technology that uh, you have the the opportunity to work with a lot. So uh, definitely a, a topic that I'm really excited about. 
Um, you know, there might be those that have no idea, right? They might, they might have been in the oil field for who knows how long, but they see those three letters, MWD, and they say, I, I, I don't know, I can throw in a bunch of random words. But for those that aren't familiar, like, you know, kind of ground floor, MWD, what does it stand for? And, uh, and, and kind of maybe define that for us. Yeah, so um, MWD stands for measurement while drilling, and it's uh, it's a process where we get data down hole and send it uh, real time to the surface. It can be any information as far as hole direction or formation evaluation information, um, and also some down hole drilling parameters like vibration or temperature, or things of that nature. And we find a way to send it up to surface and um, you know, traditionally, there's been um, there's been a few ways to do that. Usually, um, either using uh, EM technology or mud pulse telemetry. Um, and uh, so, we're going to focus on mud pulse telemetry today. And just to, a simple picture right here kind of gives an idea of you know what we're looking at. We have a pulser, a tool down hole that's that's um, sending signals up to the surface. The, the pulsar is connected to uh, some sort of sensor uh, electronics that's taking the information down hole and processing it and telling the pulsar to um, basically send this information up to surface. And it does so um, either by um, creating a pulse by uh, restricting the flow that's going down hole and it sends a wave up to surface or you could actually um, release some of it. It's called a negative pulse, and you could actually do either a positive pulse or a negative pulse to uh, to send that information up the surface. And then there's a there's a you know a decoder at the surface. There's a transducer that takes the information, converts it to um, mud pulse information to an analog signal, and then there's a decoder that transfer, um, transmits that to the rig floor display or whatever surface system you have doing the number crunching and the uh, graphical interface. So um, the uh, first uh, mud pole system was uh, filed in the US by a company called Teleco, and that was in 1978. So that's, you know, the 70s and the, the 80s and the 90s were, um, were, were, were big decades for mud pulse telemetry, especially the 90s. Uh, Toltec was founded uh, 17 years ago, uh, yeah, 17 years ago in 2003. And um, and their goal was just to make a better MBD product. And mm -hmm. here we are, seventeen later, seven years later. Yeah. So so old, I mean, so if you're given kind of bottom line, right? So an MWD tool is ultimately helping helping do what when we're in the well bore. So there's there's a couple of things that we want to do when we're uh, and I haven't uh, talked about this term yet, but directional drilling. Um, we can we can actually we can actually drill straight down, and we do that sometimes without any directional information, or we, we try to keep as straight as possible, as vertical as possible. And even in those situations, we still want to send that information up to surface. Um, and it could be formation information, it could be hole direction, or like I said, the drilling parameters that might be uh, that might be pertinent to down uh, to uh, making the decision at surface on what to do real time. Um, but the reason this technology has really taken off is because uh, directional drilling it allows allows us to uh, instead of just drilling straight down and getting into a little area where we can produce the uh, the uh, hydrocarbons, we can go uh, in long laterals and we can stay in the sweet spot of where all the um, oil and gas is and. We're usually guided by the geologist and some survey information and based and some previous hole data that they'll put together. And we do as best as we can to stay in a sweet spot and, um, and our tools that need to be accurate. And they um, and, and the more accurate we are and the better, the, the, the more time we spend drilling inside the, the rich production area, the, uh, the more profitable the well is. Mm. So, you know, when you look at, so, so that's helpful to kind of, you know, explain. So an MWD tool, you know, a lot of times I call it, you know, the, 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 the downhole compass of sorts, right? Like really helping us understand where we're going, what direction we are, like you said, for, for sliding, for directional drilling, 
Um, and, and then obviously, ultimately, that kind of help help you stay in the in the pay zone. So, um, you know, when you start looking at uh, the the technology and the platform that that you and and others in the in your team uh, have have worked diligently to to create, uh, I'd like to maybe talk a little bit about that. And I think uh, you all have, have turned it maybe the the NXT platform. Is that right? Yeah. So. You know, Toltec's been developing tools for a long time, and um, there's probably four or five generations of tools that we've had um, over the course of time. The latest generation is our NXT platform. It's been out uh, between one and a half and two years, depending on the component. Um, but as a but as a um, as a complete system, it's very feature rich. It's accessible um, as far as um, you know. It's it, it makes sense to use these tools. Especially for land-based operations, um, and um, you know the the tools that we have right now, based on years and years of development, we make them really rugged, really durable. We're able to handle high levels of shock and vibration downhole, high temperature up to um, 175 C, um, and because you know the drilling environment downhole can be pretty brutal. And there's lots and lots of uh, temperature, vibration, motion, slip stake, all kinds of different things. And the, the better you can package your, your product um, and your electronics downhole, the, the better they're going to um, perform and the more reliable they're going to be. Right. Um, so a couple more things. I mean, you know, one thing that Toltex prided, prides itself on is their graphical user interface. So when people are on location and running, running jobs, the uh, and we'll show the rig floor display here in a little bit, and you can see how um, how you know it, it basically the way the Toltec system started um, was a uh, very user user friendly interface, like I said. But the um, but there's been a lot of other user interfaces. Um, from a lot of other competitors that um, have modeled their um, their setup based on what the Toltec system looked like. Mm -hmm. So we're continuing to make that better. We're continuing to make you know um, you know everything that we do. We're we're, we're focusing every day to make our technology better. Um, the other the other thing that's that's really user friendly is the um, the um, tool tracker uh, interface that allows you to download and look graphically at everything that went down down hole. So you can look at logs and kind of do some troubleshooting. It's very, very user friendly. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're feature rich. I mean, we've got, we've got pressure wall drilling available as move gamma at the bit inclination and resistivity. And, um, the most compelling thing we have, and hopefully we can show the video here in a second. Um, but it, it's uh, it's high speed telemetry. We're able to um, operate at four bits per second, and because of that, we feel like there's really not a need for mm -hmm. EM technology because um, because of, of, of how fast our data rates are. Right, right. So, so can you talk through this with us? So maybe for some that haven't haven't seen a screen like this, what 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 are we looking at here? Yeah. So um, so first of all, let's 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 hit pause for a second. Sure. If you don't mind. So um, to, on the very bottom of the screen, you'll see a bunch of what well, looks like noise. Um, that's, the, um, mm -hmm. that's the mud pulse um, information coming to surface. And to the right, on the right side of, the, uh, of that um, area, you can see it's really, really, really noisy. So right when the tool turns on, it starts, the surface system turns on, it starts bouncing between eight different uh, filters algorithms and it tries to figure out which one was the best and so now the arrow is pointing to the green which means it's got a high quality and high confidence once that happens the filter kicks in place so um, and and then it basically goes back and, and, and uh, recalculates all the data so what we have what we see here is it might have taken 30 40 seconds for us to get the first bit of information but as you push, push play we'll see that this data just starts popping up faster and faster and faster because now the filter is, is uh, it's an adaptive filter and it's figured out um, where the, uh, what, what the best setting is to get this information. Mm. So one thing that you'll see now is, um, and, and one thing that's compelling, especially for directional drillers, is a two second tool face between two, two and a half seconds of, um, every time they get a tool face. 
Now, this is that might be overkill for some people, but if we had a PWD add on and we had um, resistivity information and we had more formation evaluation information that we could put up between there, the, we, we, we would have the bandwidth to do that. So it allows us to be, um, you know, compatible uh, in the future, basically future proof um, for, so, for, for a while. So why would I want to have uh, 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 the ability to have, you know, like you said, four bits per second? Why, why would that be something of interest to me if I'm, you know, someone running running these types of tools? Well, so as we go faster and faster and we drill faster and faster, the um, the, the geologists um, and the operators want to see some real time feedback on what what the formation's doing. And if you um, if you took if you for example if you logged gamma and you've got a gamma count every you know 20 seconds or so um, so you've got a uh, you've got a value coming up the surface and it's a, and it's your gamma reading for your formation if you get it every 20 seconds but you're drilling 200 feet an hour um, that that data is going to be spread out um, and you might miss you might miss a marker that's important for the geologist to make a decision on. Maybe we need to change our hole direction. Maybe we need to uh, change our inclination because we're, we're seeing a marker right now. We need to make a decision. Right. So so for those that may have just joined us, we're talking uh, about MWD tools and technology here from NOV and specifically talking with our guest today. So it's Kerry Eddy. He's a sales manager in North America. And uh, we're talking about uh, the uh, NXT platform of uh, uh, MWD tools from NOV. So if you have any questions regarding uh, MWD technology, uh, any any technical questions, uh, Kerry has volunteered himself in the hot seat today. So uh, I, I don't know, voluntold or volunteered. We, we won't we won't discuss that yet. But uh, but if you have any well, questions on, on anything we've talked about so far, or or a question that we haven't brought up, uh, feel free to uh, put that in the comment section, whether you're watching us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube, and we will try to get your question over to Kerry. I, I think you might have um, uh, maybe be a bit flattering for me when you describe me as a technical expert. I'm, you know, in, in the end, I'm a sales guy that started as a field hand, and, and I think there's a lot of people like that. But um, I do understand the technology uh, fairly well, and um, for more technical questions, hopefully some of my uh, engineers that are on the team with me um, they can uh, they can chime in for some more technical. You, questions. you don't you don't I have to, you don't have to be bashful. No no need <laughs> no need because I, I tell you what in this conversation you're the expert because you know way more than me. So I'm I'm giving you that badge. There you go. Right. No that that sounds good. Yeah, but if we can't answer the question, certainly we'll. We'll point uh, point folks uh, to the resource. Of course. Um, all right. So you know, I know we were. So we we kind of talked through you know some of the benefits that we have, especially with the the uh, the high speed telemetry that uh, the tools provide. Um, you kind of talked a little bit uh, about it, but I wanted to maybe circle around maybe just a little bit more. You, you're saying that the design uh, it, it's it's really important to make sure that you have a rugged tool design. Uh, because you know, I mean, let's let's face it, downhole is is pretty can be pretty rough, um, and so I, I think you said that that you and the team have really uh, that the, the engineering teams have really come together to to try to mitigate that as best as possible. Yes, um, you know, we can't control um, what the driller's doing um, to our tools downhole, really, and you know, faster is better. So the faster people can drill, the better off they are because time is money in the uh, oil field business. And sometimes people can't get beyond the fact that sometimes you're going too fast and you might be bouncing the whole tool string and it just might be getting, you know, uh, shaken and shaken and shaken over and over again with high values of shock and vibration. And, um, and so we typically can't tell people to uh, back off. So um, what we do instead is we try to ruggedize these tools so that if they're really going to go really fast, really hard, with lots of bit bounce, lots of slipstick, and all these different uh, downhole parameters that could be damaging, we just want to make sure that we're packaged in a way that we can withstand that um, the, those environments. Right. Um, so you know, I I, I know that uh, another item that I think we had mentioned uh, before briefly. You were talking about the user interface. Um, and you, know, you said that 
yeah, there, there may have been some, uh, some imitation in, in other areas, which I guess, uh, imitation is the best form of flattery. So that's, 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 uh, uh, I guess a hat tip. But, um, one thing we hadn't really touched on was, was talking through maybe the, the logging or, or troubleshooting, uh, aspects, right? Because, uh, ultimately, you know, these, these need to be, uh, solutions that can, uh, obviously run when they need to run, but also have the support needed as well. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so the great thing about the NXT platform is that every single module on the string um, that we MWD string, so there's a, you know, there'll be a pulser and there'll be, a, a, you know, a, a, maybe a gamma tool and there'll be an electronics, we call it an IDM that will be processing all the information. And each one of those modules, and there'll be a battery and the battery will be separate, but um, each one of these modules will have um, uh, locking software on it. And when the tool comes to surface, you can plug into the tool at the bottom of the tool and you can get that information within 10 to 15 minutes and you can have it shown up on a screen and you can look at all the tools side by side um, graphically and figure out if anything's happened down hole. It, it can allow you to either make a real time decision on whether or not to run it full again. If they thought that they saw some problems down hole, um, you know, you, you can pinpoint it and say, well, what happened? Well, at this moment, we didn't have any pulse information. And then you can look at that time on the uh, in, on the logging software and say, well, no, everything's fine with us. We were, we were totally pulsed and there was no power, there was no power irregularities or anything like that. So, and we can look at we can look at the we can download the logs as far as a high resolution version of the of the resistivity or the high resolution um, uh, you know a high resolution version of the gamma. And then um, they can in in 15 minutes they can get that information and go back down hole. Now. In the shop, it's even more important because what will happen is if there's ever an issue down hole, um, you know, a, a lot of times the operators will want to uh, charge back the customer, uh, our customer, uh, based on time. And sometimes the customer has to prove that the, uh, that the problems down hole or the uh, issues with, um, with, 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 the, uh, with the data coming up really had nothing to do with the tool itself. Or if it did, they have they, they found out what the problem is and they have a corrective action. But if you don't have that information and you can't tell the operator what's going on, um, you know you're at their mercy. And, um, and and a lot of times, what'll happen is you'll lose the work. So we we're uh, we're very we're very helpful that way. Uh, if any customers ever have any issues, uh, any questions, they want to look at the logs, they want to make sense of it. The uh, interface is very easy, but we also have a 24-hour uh, um, support line. Uh, one of our um, one of our a team of engineers has the phone with them 24/7, so our customers are able to call and get information on the fly um, to help them succeed. Right. So I, I know that we're uh, getting close to where we'll start getting some of the questions in. I see that that we've had some some good uh, Q and A and conversation happening in the in the chat. Uh, but before we do, I, I know that again, you, you touched on it earlier uh, on uh, on some of the available uh, add-on capabilities that you have with the with the platform. So uh, maybe that's something we can talk to as well because that was kind of intriguing. As as I was kind of reading through some of the the notes here today, I saw it says, "Oh, you got some some add-ons." So is is that something that um, that you could talk to? All right. All right. All right. Yeah. No, no worries. So yeah, let's just. So we wanted to talk about the add-ons that we have with the the platform. So I think you had. Uh, we, I think I uh, heard that you talked about maybe pressure while drilling and and some other items. Is that is that accurate? Yeah. So there's a few things. Um, the pressure while drilling is real important these days. When we talk about um, how fast how fast people are drilling, um, you know, they're talking about a mile a day. Um, kind of numbers right now and that's just really really fast and so what happens is as you're drilling you um, the, the the mud the drilling fluid goes down through the center of the tool and through the um, through the pipe and then it goes to the bed and it comes back up the surface well so all of that all of that formation that's been chopped up by the bit needs to get to surface and if it doesn't it'll um, it'll pack off inside the hole and it'll cause you to get stuck and sometimes getting stuck means that you're losing all the tools that are down hole, and that could be hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Um, and uh, offshore, it's a lot more than that. 
So um, if you know if you know that your formation information is uh, if, if your um, if your mud and, and your uh, cuttings aren't getting the surface. Um, you can make a determination, you know, to uh, to pull back or uh, to save your to save the uh, tools downhole. And the way the way a lot of people do that is with pressure while drilling. It, it tells them a lot of information real time, so that they can continue to go fast. Um, and so it's it, another it's another thing where time is money, and um, and and that'll help you go faster without worrying about losing um, some expensive jewelry downhole. We call it jewelry. Mm -hmm. um, but um, anyway, the the um, the, uh, the other tools that we have are a resistivity tool, and that's just a really it's 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 a it's a formation evaluation tool that's uh, used to be used really offshore. Um, we've made it accessible for land-based drilling, and it's starting to make sense for a lot of people to get really rich downhole. Um, information mm -hmm. on what the formation is doing. So, especially when we're doing like, you know, you know, you, you think about drilling two miles out and you're trying to stay within a five foot window. Yeah. And the way you can do that is if you can look at your formation and your formation changes and goes up and down, the resistivity tool will give you the information to do that. And as well, the Azimuthal Gamma tool, um, it's just it's a different kind of information, but it kind of tells you a little bit of the same stuff. Um, and, um, and, and our tool is, uh, the, the, our azimuthal gamma tool is right at the bit. Um, uh, most of the other tools that measure that this kind of information have to be above the motor and maybe above some pony collars or some different stuff. So typically those measurement devices are 30 to 40 to 50 feet away from the bit. But when you put that, the, the tool that's going to measure the information that's important, um, at the bit then you're able to really make some real-time decisions on um, on drilling. So, Kerry, I want to give you uh, the last 60 seconds before we switch over to getting some Q&A. So you've got eyes on the horizon uh, looking at the future, uh, the NWD space. Uh, I saw some, look like some questions in the, the chat as well. So, you know, based on your, you know, almost decade and a half of, of experience in the field, what, what are you, what are you kind of seeing as, uh, as you look out there? Well, I think that, you know, as we get, as our, the, the features that we're offering right now, um, they're going to, they're going to get more and more accurate and they're going to be more and more accessible. And as uh, the, uh, the day rates for, um, the, for, for real time, you know, directional drilling operations continue to decline. Um, it's important that we, uh, are our customers are able to access te this technology and that's just going to continue to move forward um you know at some point you know um you know wired pipe um maybe fiber you know i don't know if wired pipe will be accessible for uh for land-based operations and um and I, I would um you know there's probably some other things that i'm not even thinking of like neutron density I'm just, there's a there's a Neutron density used to be something that was used exclusively um, offshore for you know rigs that were you know extremely expensive to operate, and um, we're, we're seeing that te technology making its way um, to uh, some land-based projects as well. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, you can look even in other other parts of uh, uh, completely different industries and things that once were kind of in the the very, you know, maybe upper echelons or very niche markets, you know, eventually kind of open up. So yeah, I, I could I could see that that migration as well. So that's uh, that's really, really good. So we've been talking with uh, Kerry Eddy. Uh, he has been talking about MWD uh, technology from NOV, specifically the, the NXT uh, platform of tools. And uh, he is the sales manager for North America and uh, has, has uh, been talking to us on that. So what we're going to do now is shift over to Shelby Dumain to get some of the questions that uh, you have been putting into the comments section and see if we can get, uh, get those answered for you. Hey, Shelby. Hey, Michael. All right. So our first question comes from Tamir on uh, Facebook. Here, let me get that there. And they're wondering how long, and, and that's in hours, how many hours does it take to assemble an MWD tool on the rig itself? Oh, that's an interesting question, and I'm glad you asked. Um, the um, 
right now, the way our system is set up, it, it's set up in a way where you lay all your tools out, you make them up. It's a matter of 10 or 15 minutes where you make the whole tool up, you test it, you plug into it, you program it. Um, you, um, we have a thing called high side. We have to make sure that the tool is pointing in the direction where we need it to. So, um, so the information down hole makes sense. Uh, moving forward, um, the industry, and I should have brought this up as far as the future goes, and this is going to be some short-term future stuff. Um, the industry is moving towards more and more and more unmanned uh, MWD operations. And what that means is uh, we'll put the tool together with the pulser and the electronics and everything else inside a collar, and we'll make it up in our facility. And from there, that tool will be shipped, ready to go um, to location. And all I have to do is pick up the tool, and once it gets vertical and once it starts um, flowing, the tool turns on and it starts working. And um, that's something that we're actively working on and it's, uh, it's probably something that's going to be uh, more and more um, important, you know, with, uh, with, with, you know, operators wanting fewer and fewer, fewer people on the rig, um, even after the lockdown, I think that's still going to be the case. Um, it reduces liability and so it's going to be important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And this next question comes from Fatios on LinkedIn. And they're wondering if you could go into a little bit more detail on how the signal is transmitted to the surface. So the way we typically do it, um, and I'm just going to talk about our, um, our marquee product right now, which is our top knot pulser. Um, it, is, it is a mud assisted tool, which means um, instead of just uh, typically what you'll have is you'll have a uh, you'll have an opening which we call an orifice, and you have a poppet that will actuate inside that orifice. And once that poppet goes inside the orifice and works moves towards it, it'll cause a pressure wave up to the surface. Um, we have a smaller poppet valve that opens up and it allows mud to flow and push the main poppet. So that enables us to get a lot more efficient. Um, uh, our battery consumption is um, is uh, one of the industry leading, um, it, it, especially for a top mount pulser. And um, and that's because of the way it's designed. Now, once that um, once that uh, once that pulse happens, once that pocket goes inside the orifice, it sends a wave, a pressure wave, up to surface, and that wave is then decoded. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. And and so we have this next question comes from David. And I know you talked about the future of MWD, but he was asking if you could go a little bit on the future of LWD or a logging wall drilling. And uh, if there are any differences there or those answers might be uh, uh, fairly similar, but thought I'd, I'd bring that question up to you. So uh, thanks, David. Um, uh, yeah, so first of all, the, the thing I'd like to mention more than anything else is I feel that LWD, which is logging wall drilling, which is different than real-time measurement while drilling. What that, what that means is you'll have these tools down hold. This is what we used to do because we couldn't send the information up as reliably as we can now. We would log that information, come out of the hole, and download those logs. And, and, and then they could make a decision on how they wanted to produce the, uh, the, the hole that they just drilled. Um, these days, with, with, our, um, with our data rates getting so high and, and hitting at four bits per second, logging while drilling is is becoming a thing where we're just we're just having some redundancy. We're getting backup information in the tool, maybe a higher resolution version, or maybe just some data that maybe it got skipped or maybe it didn't make its way up the surface. But right now we're going so fast that we don't really need to log anything. Everything up, everything is being sent up real time, and I think we're just going to get faster and faster. And I think that we're going to be able to send more data, uh, more formation information up. Uh, faster and faster, and that's where the uh, and and that's where the uh, that that's where the future is going. As far as the different tools, I think we kind of talked about that already. Um, you know, neutron density and resistivity. Uh, I, I think that those are just going to be um, more accessible mm -hmm. um, for lane-based operations. Right. And this last question, um, it's kind of I've seen a few here on on cost or price, and we, we've been asked this before, and uh, we can't talk specifically about costs or price uh, in, you know, in much detail or competitors, but can you talk a little bit generally on how our tools compare, um, compare with price compared to other, other options out there? I'll just give you a general idea. Right. Um, and let's, let's talk about, let's, let's back up five years. 
five years ago, if you wanted to run a resistivity job, a resistivity tool, you would be doing that offshore with one of the majors. And your day rate would be somewhere between, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a big number, $20,000, $30,000 a day. Um, uh, maybe a little less. Um, we scale that down, our day rates, um, for, for right now. I think we've scaled that down by a factor of 10. Um, and that number is going to continue to go down. Uh, and, and that's and that's what I that's what I talk about being accessible. Great. No, that uh, I, I really appreciate the the context there, and, and certainly feeling feeling those questions, which uh, we always appreciate uh, those that are watching, uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, your feedback. So, if uh, there was a question that maybe you had that you, maybe you're watching the replay and weren't able to get in on the live broadcast, uh, you can certainly uh, send an email to Kerry, and uh, we'll put his email address on the screen as well. Uh, but you can also uh, reach out and uh, can uh, visit uh, the NOV website where you can learn more about the uh, offerings uh, from the, uh, the NXT platform and others. And so we'll put that link in the comments uh, here on uh, on the show as well. So we'll make sure to get that uh, link out there as well. So um, I'm trying to think, I think we covered just just about everything, uh, Carrie. Uh, really appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, walk through MWD tools with us. I know that it's um, kind of, to a certain degree, kind of speaking from personal experience, I think it's one of those things. Once it kind of gets in your blood, you just want to <laughs> want to keep keep running with it more. But uh, but really appreciate you uh, talking about that. And again, uh, if you want to send a, an email, uh, you can do that. You, you can uh, email Carrie, and that's uh, Carrie Eddie at nov.com. And I think we yeah. have yeah, there it is. All right, so so uh, I, I'm sure you'll be glad to take. Take all the all those uh those those flood of emails that that you'll get after the show, but uh yeah again if you want to uh give a, get a question in or or just get some clarification on any things that we talked about today, I'm sure Carrie and the team will be more than happy. So uh, Carrie, right. thanks for uh, for taking the time to talk with us today. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so uh, we had a question at the top of the show uh, that Shelby had on our Rig Geeks post of the week. And so we want to see uh, who out there is a, a trivia master. So uh, Shelby, uh, let's get the question again for those that uh, may may not have, have seen it uh, and see if they can get a quick quick guess in. Absolutely. So that question, uh, just to repeat, was the first patented mud pull system was developed in which country? And we gave a couple different choices here. We had A, United States, B, France, C, Canada, D, Holland, or E, Scotland? And uh, that answer, you know, Dremel, I saw a lot of people got it here in the comments, and the answer is France. France uh, for the win. Absolutely. There you go. And it, it's actually pretty interesting. So the Teleco uh, mud pulse telemetry technology was actually invented or created by two separate, um, completely independent research mm. and studies. So they kind of both had the same idea. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty cool. That's a good one. I, I like that one. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Shelby. Really appreciate that. Uh, again, a special thanks to Carrie, and uh, certainly as always, thanks to you for joining us on uh, this episode of Nov uh, Live. We always look forward to your comments, uh, suggestions, feedback, um, anything that you think uh, might even be a good technology to cover. Uh, certainly welcome those uh, ideas and comments. And again, just as a real quick week recap, you can email us um, and we'll put that email on the screen, but that you can send it to social media at NOV.com. Uh, of course, you can uh, uh, reach us on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, any of the NOV channels there, or uh, you can give us a call and leave us a, a message. And again, I'm, I'm always a fan, as, as Shelby mentioned as well, she is. And again, that number, uh, plus one, three, four, six, two, two, three, four, seven, nine, nine. And be more than happy to get your, your comment, thought, or idea on the show. So from all of us here at NOV, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for watching and for listening. And we'll talk to you next time.